Hey everybody, here is another video of the infamous uh, Federway Okia power supply. I did a video of this thing, I think back in the spring, or possibly maybe last year sometime. I can't remember exactly how long ago it was. But basically I picked up a um, computer from the computer work store for a relatively cheap. Had a socket AM2 motherboard in what appeared to be a brand new case with this as the power supply. This was included with it. Pretty sure it was included with the case. You can find these Okia power supplies in cases and other things. And um, sometimes you'll find this in stuff um, branded Broadway Comcorp. You'll find these things in their cases and sometimes you'll find these power supplies under the brand Broadway Comcorp. But um, not all the Okia power supplies are this bad, but um, this is pretty much as bad as it gets, I believe, when it comes to this brand. And um, it's about as bad as it gets when it comes to um, cheap power supplies, though so there are ones out there that are even worse than this, believe it or not. But um, in the previous video, I did just a video of the power supply in the case, and I decided to do a retake today of it in the case, but I figured I'd just junk that video not upload that and to show you this as I'm tearing this thing apart I'm you already got the solder iron plugged in getting ready to unsolder some things but um, just want to get you a good view of this thing with the PCB loose from the case first thing um, that really caught my eye after I opened this thing back up was this right here have a look at that switch yes yeah, it's a regular um, rocker switch but um notice something here let me get my flashlight so you can see a little better. But, um, notice how close those two wires are together. There's only like a millimeter or so of space between one wire and the other. And considering that 120 volts, or if you're living in like Australia or somewhere, 240 volts is going through this, through this switch. Um, let's say the switch turned on and power supply was running, and you used this switch to break the load of a running power supply. It wouldn't take much at all for that um, higher voltage AC to jump over this little, you know, jump over that little bit of space. Because we're only talking about like a millimeter or so of space between those two wires. So um, if you was to hit the switch, the AC would just, would just arc across and keep going into the power supply. Probably wouldn't be very good of a scenario. But um, let's go and have a look at this thing right quick again. Have a look at this EMI filter, or lack of EMI filter. We're, we're missing both the X capacitors. We have these um, standard disk capacitors here for Y caps. Those are not the safety capacitors. Those are the ones that tend to short the ground if they fail. Unlike these little Y caps that are supposed to be used, those are fail safe. They open. They go up in circuit when they fail. And if you notice, um, Obviously, there's nothing in terms of EMI filtering on the AC plug. We got these really thin, um, let's see, 20 gauge wires going between the um, AC plug and the power supply. And same for the, um, I don't know, those, those are 18 gauge wires going from your um, voltage double circuit to the switch. Flipping the switch between, you know, 240 to 120 volts enables the voltage double circuitry in here, consisting of the diodes. Which I'm um, here they're using just for diodes rather than a rectifier bridge. You know, this thing here. So that being said, let me go and just quickly slap those components on there. Just, <laughs> just for show how they would go in there. See, one coil there. One coil there. See, the X capacitor here. And of course, I don't expect this to look real neat or anything. I'm just setting the components in there. Just to show you how things would look. If it was properly built. And of course, you can put a bridge rectifier there. You know, you got this, this dumb wire here. It's in the way. Move that out of the way. Now we got some more room to work with. Set this X cap in there. It's funny, it says Carly on the top of it. Put this coil back. 
and finally this white cap will go right there so yeah it gives you an idea of how this thing would look if it had any e um, a complete EMI filtering stage and of course it would have these two Y caps there and a Y cap back here where it says CY3 and you can tell this is a half bridge design with this dipped capacitor right here behind the primary heatsink and um, have a look at these capacitors here this is one this is one of your bad brands CandyCon only 330 microfarads now this piece of crap is rated for 450 watts yeah, get a look at that label while we're at it. Just before we continue on, have a look at this label. There's your ratings. I'll refer back to this frequently when we get into the um get more and deeper into the analysis. But, um anyways, have a look at this thing. Those really those real small capacitors, they claim to be 330 microfarads or probably 220. I'll rip them out and take them down to the lab at CPCC and find out for sure. And I'll actually update the video. And um, let's go and have a look at the primary side, your main switchers. We have two D13007s. And we have a, um, it's probably an in channel MOSFET there for your 5 volt standby. On the left, here's some undersized transformers. Oh yeah, back to the capacitors, I want to mention one more thing. Um, a typical 450 watt power supply would probably have 560 to 680 microfarad capacitors here. And of course, we're talking about an older design, not an active PFC unit. We're talking about the older voltage doubler technology, like this right here. Anyways, i um, got these smaller transformers, and of course, we can forget about having just optocouplers for the um, feedback circuit. We have a isolation transformer there for the feedback circuit one of those is and the other is a um, 5 volt standby transformer and of course your main transformer it's an EI33 usually you'll find um, EI35, EI40s and some of the better of the cheap power supplies and transformers even larger than that in quality power supplies this here is probably equivalent of a probably 180 200 watt power supply would have this size of transformer that being said, let's move on to the secondary side. And have a look at this. You probably see it already. Look at what they got in the center there. That's what we have for 12 volt um, rectification. More on that here in just a minute. On the left, we have this lovely CET. Um, <laughs> see, transistor. Not sure if it's a BJT, JFET, or a MOSFET. But um, it's how we get our 3.3 volts on this thing. In the center, we have two. I believe three amp fast recovery diodes, separate diodes, like all soldered together to a pack and clamped on to this heat sink and using the heat sink as a conductor <laughs> to ground. Well, not the ground, but you know, down here to the output rails. I don't know why I said ground. But um, yeah, they're using this heat sink as a conductor. And over here is our 5 volt component that is a um, SP3040ST. So that's a, probably a 30 amp component there. 30 amp um, diode pack. Anyways, um, let's have a look at that label again. Remember our, um, our 12 volt output is 6 amp combined capacity of those two diodes there. Oh, but it says 18 amps on the label so they're tripling the um, max this thing can do. So we're probably saying 5 amp 12 volt rail just for safety. Just for a safe um, amount of headroom. So 5 amp actual 12 volt output when it claims to have 18 amps. For five for plus 5 it says 50 amps. Now keep in mind this is a um, 30 amp component. Plus it has to supply power over here to the 3.3 volt um, circuitry. So this, this thing here is doing both the 5 volts and 3.3 volts. So we're talking about maybe... Um, I would say I'll, I'll call it 15 amps on the um, 5 volt rail maybe 10 to 15 amps over here over here total <clears throat> now I'm um, not sure what the current capacity of the CET um, component there is it's funny that CET reminds me of something 
computer engineering technology. <laughs> but anyways, let's continue on here. I was just seeing that this thing has DC to DC conversion for the 3.3 volt rail. We only have one coil here. That's just for 5 volts and 12 volts. And look how small it is. <laughs> Guys, I hope I hope I'll ever see that in a real two, in a real um, 450 watt power supply. This is what you'll typically find in probably a 150 to 200 watt supply. That size of an inductor. And look at these capacitors. Look how small they are. I think the biggest one there is a 1000 microfarad. So our 3.3 volt only has one single 470 microfarad capacitor. Our 12 volt has a single 1000 microfarad capacitor. Our 5 volts has a single 1000 microfarad capacitor. That one's a Canicon. Probably really sorry brand. And here we have minus 5 volt and minus 12 volt. Now of course minus 5 volt has been exempted from the ATX specification since what 2001 it's been out for quite a while I mean ISA ISA buses have been gone from computers for a long time now so why do power supplies keep cheap power supplies keep using this minus 5 volt rail I never understand why they keep using such old crappy designs but um anyways here's a look at our, um, our thin wires I am going to save these wires though because I don't know they might be useful for something later on but um, I'll show you something right quick before I end this video. This is an example of a power supply that could have potential. I mean, you could add in all the um, EMI filtering components and an MOV. It has spots for MOVs, which MOVs or varistors look like this and offer your surge protection. Those are definitely nice to have. But um set this piece of metal up here before I cut myself on it. It's so thin. Um, anyways, this is a PCB that could possibly, um, you know, have potential. You could add in the needed filtering components, the surge protection, but the problem here is this thing is such a piece of crap, the components that are already on it, you'd be replacing about everything just to make it half decent, so a unit like this wouldn't be worth wasting your time on. And before I end this video, let me show you a solder side of this PCB. And of course, there fell off the components that are not, are not actually part of this power supply. Set those to the side. Here's a solder shot. Not the worst, not the worst, but um, it could be better, I guess. I've seen solder work much, much worse than this. But anyways, this is the um, final video of this Okia Featherweight Wonder. So if you ever have one of these kicking around or have one in your computer, this is probably a good video on why you should take it out. <laughs> it's funny. You look at this, look at this UL certification there in a CSA all those are definitely forged because this thing does not meet the requirements for those certifications so anyways have any questions or comments feel free to ask and thanks for watching